Welcome to Cover Design Studio. In this video, we walk you through designing your Kindle cover in Photoshop Elements. You'll also learn how to prepare the files for submission to Amazon. To design your cover, you'll need three things, Photoshop Elements, your design file, and your manuscript's copyright page. If you don't have Elements, you can download the free version at Adobe's website. They don't ask for a credit card number or your personal information, so it's an easy way to give their products a test drive. Let's get started. First, you'll need to open the photo editor in Photoshop Elements. Then, locate the design file by going up to File and clicking Open. Once you've found the correct folder, select the file that's a .tiff. There's another file in your folder, but it won't work in Photoshop Elements. If you get a text box that says Update, go ahead and click Update. You may also get one that says Convert Mode and you can also click Convert Mode. If you get a box that asks you to flatten or don't flatten your image, click Don't Flatten. Once you have the file opened, we're going to go ahead and save it with a, the name of the book. So go up to File and click Save As. Click OK. And then we'll change the name that's currently in there to the name of the book. This book, for the example, is going to be called The Star Book. And I actually leave the word Kindle at the back of it, so for future reference, I always know what it is. And you're going to want to make sure that's saved as a TIFF. And Layers is checked. And RGB is checked if, it, if you have the options for these. So go ahead and click Save. And the LZW default is fine. So before we get started, go up to the top and make sure that you have Experts selected. And then you're going to need these tools showing and you're going to need these layers showing. If they're not showing, go to Windows and you can just select Tools and Layers and they should appear. You're also going to want to see this ruler, so go to View and make sure Rulers is checked. And then select the capital T. This is the text tool, which you'll be using often. And if you don't see this box down here, click Tool Options and it should make it pop up. And then you want to make sure this little box where it says anti-aliasing has a check in it. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got here. Over on the right, we have all of our text layers. Each text layer corresponds with a layer on the cover. And this one says declarative statement. So it actually corresponds on the cover with the one that says declarative statement. The next one says author name, and that corresponds to author name. You get the idea. And some of you may see a center line running down through the middle of your cover design. That's just a center guide that won't show up in your final product. Lastly is the starburst right here. And there are just a few designs that have these, so if yours is one of them, we'll be able to help you out with how to format that and customize it for your own book. So right now, go ahead and locate the layer that says Copyright Notice and select the text tool over on the left and then find the copyright notice on your actual cover. Sometimes they're kind of buried and can be difficult to spot. Mine's down here in the lower left-hand corner. I'm going to zoom in using Control Plus so that we can read it. Copy and paste into your book's copyright page, quote, original and modified cover art by artist name, and that'll depend on your cover and CoverDesignStudio.com. So with the text tool selected, we'll click at the beginning and highlight the text that's in between the quotations. That's the part that needs to go on your copyright page. And we can go right click, copy, or edit copy. And then open up your manuscript and get to the copyright page. And you'll just paste this text inside. And now you've met your copyright requirement for your cover design. I also like to make sure the text, the typeface, and the point size are the same as the rest of the text on the page, and you can do that as well. And then you can just hit Save and Close. Now we don't want the copyright notice actually showing up on the final outcome, so we'll go over to the Layers panel and click the eye. And you'll see now there's a red line running through the eye, and you can't see the copyright notice anymore. So we can zoom back out and start entering 
and customizing some of our text. So let's look first for the one that corresponds with the book title. This one is right here. And we need to go over to the left and select the text tool. And here on this particular design, we have small text and large text. And so you'll always want to change and modify each one line at a time. Otherwise you can lose the formatting. So this, this book is gonna be called the star book. So I can leave the first word there. If I didn't need it, I would just delete it. The star book. And then we'll go over and click on that layer to render it. So let's just start at the top of the layers and work our way down. This is the definitive or the declarative statement. I'm gonna change this to say the definitive guide. And every design template sort of has different options this way. Okay, the next layer says author name here and I can see where it corresponds on the page. Oops, what I did there was I just accidentally created a new layer. It says layer one. If I click on it, it'll go away and bring me back to where I wanted to be. So make sure I have the text tool selected and I'll try this again. Okay, my name is Stacy Vanderpool. So that's what I'll go ahead and enter. And the next line is the copyright notice and we've already taken care of that. The next line, this area is for leaving a blurb or an endorsement or a quotation from the book or from a person, um, or you can just leave a brief description. So I'm gonna say everything you need to know about naming your own stars, including a list of recommended organizations. I'll click on the layer to render it. The next one, information about the author. It's way down here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that it's easier for me to highlight it and easier for you to see. So I'm going to say night sky gazer and star naming expert. If this was a novel, I could say something like American author and novelist. Okay, this is for subtitle or description. You can put a subtitle here if you don't have one or if yours is too long for your design. You can also put a tagline or a really short description. So I'm gonna say the universe is your oyster. Okay, the next layer is the name of the book and we've already done that layer. And the last layer is the starburst. So let's zoom in here. This is traditionally where you would place a, a, a book award that you'd won or been nominated for. If the book has yet to be published, you can change, change it to say something else. I'm gonna put the most complete resource available on the topic. That will work. If it were fiction, you could say something like an incredible story of hope and triumph or available April 15th, something relevant. So we'll zoom back out. Now let's say that this didn't work for you. Let's say for example, you get the title of your book is longer than was really meant for this design. Go ahead and click the text tool and the title layer. So let's say that instead the name of this book was the Star Handbook. And you can see that it clearly doesn't fit and it doesn't work. So to customize this so that it works for any title, highlight the large letters and go right down here into the tool options and reduce the point size. Right now it's 83.33. I'll reduce it to 72 and see how that looks. I think that's still way too big. It's pushing out to the margins of the page and I don't like it. So I'll highlight it again and I'll just pick 60. That looks a lot better. So I'll click it to render it. Now one thing I don't like that I'm seeing here is a lot of space in between the words that wasn't there before. So I can do the same thing. I go down to the bottom and there's something that says letting. And this affects this letting refers to the space between lines. So I'll put it at 60 
maybe a little tighter, about 48. No, that's too tight. Let's do something in between, 55. Oh, I like that. Okay. So I'll click on the layer to render it. But now I feel like it's sitting too far away from the subtitle or my, my tagline. So because these are all fully customizable, you can just click on the layer that you want to move or adjust and go over to your tools panel on the left and click the move tool, which is this one right here. And that will enable you to really move the layer anywhere you want. In this case, we'd want to move it down about so, but you could move it up or around and you can do that with all of the layers if they're selected. So I'll move this one right here. Click on it over in the layers panel. And I can go edit undo move if I decide I didn't like where I moved it or edit redo move if I wanna take a second look. And you can go edit undo, it will undo your last steps if there's anything that you mess up during the design process. So for instance, if I wanna go back to just the original version of the title, I will just click undo, undo several times until it's back to my original title, The Starbook. And I'll click on that to render it. So the next thing you'll wanna do is proofread it for any spelling or grammatical errors. And once you're satisfied with the final outcome, You'll go to File, Save to save your work, and you can click OK. And the next thing we need to do is create a new file with embedded fonts. So we're going to go to File, Save As to create a new file that we can use to make our JPEG with. And at the end of this, I'm just going to write the word embed, and that's how I can keep track of what's what. And this should still be as a TIFF with layers as RGB. We'll hit Save and LZW default is fine. And now we need to actually embed the layers. So we have a different file and a different file name. We're gonna go up to layers and flatten and click okay. And now you can see that our layers have been flattened into a single image and all of our fonts will be embedded into that image. And now all we have to do is create a JPEG. So we'll go to File, Save As, and this time, instead of saving it as a TIFF file, we're gonna save it as a JPEG file. And this is the file that you'll submit to Amazon. So select JPEG, and you have the RGB still checked. Click Save. And you want this to be 12 maximum. We want the highest quality image we can get out of this. We'll click OK. And now you're finished. You have a final file that you can submit to Amazon for your Kindle cover.